Alright, what's up people? This is Sif Urian, and right now we're going to be checking out episode 2 of Taboo. I'm really excited to get back into this because last week was really, really cool. I do like this show. Alright, so we're going to just do a very quick recap. James Delaney has returned to Britain after being gone for many, many years. He's returned for the funeral of his father, and he discovered after having the body re-dug up and a autopsy performed, I think it was, that his father was actually poisoned. What could be, we're not too sure just yet, but there's a possibility that it could be related to some heated discussions about some land. Apparently there's this piece of land that is uh, the point of a lot of contention between America and Great Britain, uh, because this piece of land, I think whoever owns it, they also own Vancouver, was a direct link to China and everything. So of course people are arguing, people want to own this land, um, and Sir Stuart Strange seems to be like the one at the top that wants to own this piece of land. But to be honest with you, I, I personally think it might be a little bit of a misdirection. Like I'm not sure, like I just, I've just got this feeling, right? For them to kind of like reveal that he was murdered in episode one, then also be talking about the land, it just seemed a bit too on the nose, you know what I mean? I think it might be a bit of a red herring. I think it could turn out that James's father was murdered for something completely unrelated to the land, you know? Um, possibly the sister, like her and her husband, like I don't like the husband. I don't fucking trust him at all. Of course, he didn't want to pay the extra shillings to have the body dug deeper. Showed that he didn't have much regard for the man. Plus, with it being poison as well, like... I don't know. I've just always kind of, like, identified poisoning as a kind of, like, a woman's tactic of murder. If that makes any sense. If Sir Stuart Strange really wanted to take him out, they would have made it just look like an accident. Or a attempted robbery or something. There would be, like something there in the hopes that the daughter would sign the papers and sign the land over. I think if if a man did it, he wouldn't have picked poison. I think that's kind of like a woman's tactic. So, like maybe, maybe the daughter did it. I don't know, but there is definitely something else there. There's definitely some type of red herring or something. Uh, anyway, we also learned that James Delaney, he served under Sir Stuart Strange. Um, he was in like the same regiment or something, right? Oh, and a uh, quick side note, right? When Sir Stuart Strange popped up, so many people commented down below like, oh my God, Game of Thrones, the High Sparrow, didn't you recognize him? And it's like, of course I recognize him, man. It's just, when I see um, Jonathan Price, is it? Whenever I see him, I just don't automatically think Game of Thrones. Like, he's he's a really big English actor. He's been in many, many movies and many things. So, every time I see him, I think of other roles he's done, not just automatically High Sparrow, you know what I mean? Like, one of the very first times that I ever saw him was in a movie back when I was a kid, back in the early 80s. Oh, my God. Um, something... Something Wicked This Way Comes, I think it was called. Really kind of weird kind of movie about like a, a, a circus group that comes into this um, like town and uh, they start granting wishes or something. But it was like each wish was at like a price type of thing. Very weird movie, um, but definitely a good watch, man. Go check it out if you don't believe me. Go check it out. I haven't seen it for years, but my memories of it is like, <laughs> very weird movie man something wicked this way comes go check it out anyway 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 James Delaney he served under Stuart Strange um, and he had like a perfect record absolute perfect record until he started getting into a bit of trouble and then he disappeared when a uh, ship sank on the way to Africa now over the years while James Delaney has been missing there's been many many rumors that's popped up and uh, so Stuart Strange is uh, really interested in these rumors. And I think that's gonna be kind of like a setup to like the odd episode here and there that's gonna be like a flashback. Of course, they're gonna be all rumors. <clears throat> so they're gonna be kind of blown out of proportion and this happened, that happened. But then I think it could be like a good like little twist that we find out that all these rumors are fucking true. 
Like they're not just fantasy storytelling. Like they like he actually did all these things. And that kind of leads on to the next point I want to make about the vision that Delaney had when his father was having the autopsy thing done onto him, uh, investigating the cause of death. James was walking around this room and there was all these corpses lying on like these fucking beds. He ended up talking to these corpses and pulling the sheets off them and everything. And like I made a quick note of what he said because I thought it was very, very important. He said, um, I had no fear for you and I had no guilt for you. Now that to me, that really does says a lot, you know, especially like the fact that the one that got up off the bed was African and fucking a giant. There must be some reason why they casted that actor for that role and why that camera angle and everything like James James Delaney was literally looking up at him. So there must be some reason to that. Uh, plus the whole guilt line as well. Like I have no guilt for you. Like was it was it James's fault that the ship sank, or could he have saved people? Like. I don't know, man. And there's definitely more there than what meets the eye, you know. And saying that, um, at the end of the episode, James received a letter from his sister. And it had that one line that I did actually write down as well. Um, I hope I can trust you to keep the secrets of the past buried in a deeper grave. Also referring to the father not being buried deep and stuff. I said last week that it seems like there might have been a bit of like an a incest kind of situation between them two. I've been thinking about it and uh, while editing the episode as well and stuff like, I think there definitely was some type of incest situation going on there. Like first off when James was talking to the butler about his mother and where his mother came from and stuff. Uh, James Delaney was basically saying that he had a different mother. Because even the butler said, like, how do you know these things? So I'm thinking maybe that, that him and his sister had, like, a different mother. You know, not that it, that makes incest, like, any more kind of acceptable. But, you know, they, they had, like, different mothers. Plus then there's the whole situation with the younger brother as well. Like, why was he sent away? And I could be wrong, but I think his identity is kind of kept a bit secret as well. So I'm thinking there was some kind of incest. And the younger brother is actually the son. Right? I think that might be something. And like, I'm not too sure on like, dates and, and, and stuff, but... If, if this boy, like, like, let's just say this boy turns out to be 15 years old, and James Delaney's been missing for the last 15 years, it would make sense that if he got his sister pregnant, his father told him to fuck off. You know, so he left and went to Africa and that's when she had the baby and da da da. So, like I said, I'm not too sure on like the dates, um, but it would kind of make sense. But yeah, man, that was my um, my quick recap. <laughs> my quick recap of last week's episode. I'm sorry, man. I know I ramble. Um, anyway, we're going to get into this episode, episode two of Taboo. Let's do this, man. Pick it up. So, you've no problem with the principle of obeying me, just the execution. Execution? Of the lane. Good hell. You march with me, now you can march with me. March where? For what bloody purpose? For the purpose of staying alive right now. What is it about you bloody mad Delaney's? <laughs> Bloody madhouse again. <laughs> Bloody madhouse again. Toward the end, you said my father really ate. Aye, he lived on air and honey beer. From where? From a man in Feather Lane. Look, it was cheaper than the tavern, and uh, your father only gave me coppers. What, ma'am? The poison. A man who's since died, and his wife since left. And how convenient is it that the guy is dead? You know what I mean? It's just a question of who did it, you know what I mean? Pretty fucking big diamonds, man. Each item on the list will be auctioned for the length of time it takes for its allotted candle. Burn down one inch. When the inch is burnt, last bid will win. He's gonna buy a ship, isn't he? Who will start the bidding? 660. Do I have 670? 680. 690. 700. Fucking he's there. One of um, Stuart Strange's men. 800 pounds. 
Oh shit. <laughs> Look at his face. I spoke to Old Grady afterwards. He said Delaney told him he was going to use the ship for trade. With whom? He said his company was called Delaney Nooker Trading. He is planning to reopen up the trading post to assert his ownership. That fucking man will hang for treason. <laughs> Someone salty. <laughs> So I already have a strategy in my head. Not as salty as him, though. <laughs> oh, man. How did he know they were taking place in Ghent? The location is a state secret. And where did he get the money to buy a ship? Hmm? Jesus Christ. Am I the only one in this company with a brain? Americans, right? They got to him first. They think he's working with America. One of the agents approached him, briefed him, gave him money, and secured his services. Who, who did, sir? The fucking Americans! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, obviously, he's not working with the Americans but it does like kind of bring up a good question like who is feeding him the information i think he might have a bit of like an insider or something that we haven't seen yet Atticus! oh shit okay never knew he was in this it's the biggest thing you saw in africa an elephant that's who was it Atticus, give me my horse back <laughs> Are they like old friends or something? I know you're gold and you just bought a ship, so pay up. For what? Well, you know when someone wants a man killed, they come to Dolphin. But still. Yeah. When someone wants a man killed, they come to Atkus. His father. Well, about a year ago, gentleman comes in, sit right there where you are now. So is that about old Norris Delaney? Ooh. The mad bastard lighting fires by the river. <laughs> so he falls in, current takes him. How about that? So I said, you go or I'll slit your gizzard and drop you in the current you're playing with Captain Delaney. And who was this gentleman? Who was he a country man? I'd say it was in East India. More from up lead and all. I could tell by the car was cheap. So how much would you give me for not killing your father? Nothing. Wow. He's dead. Well, 15 pounds. <laughs> 15 pounds. And the return of your ropes. I will give you 15 pounds. Minus the heels on my boots. And I will need your eyes and ears from now on as well. I like that how he's kind of like recruited him because he does need that. He needs people out there, his eyes and ears, like when he's not there. There's the butler as well. Um, I reckon the prostitute, I think. Because they've got a bit of a history together, like she took his like virginity or something, right? She might be one as well. Um, but I think that there'll be more characters out there that will be kind of on his side. You know what I mean? His little inner circle. Oh, fuck. I had a dream last night. I was lying in the North Sea. My body was England. I was an island. Coop Fairton! Why the bodysuit? You want me to write this down? Yes! The fuck is this? Oh, it's um, from the East India. Fuck them as well. <laughs> what the fuck? <clears throat> but like I said, like, what's, what's the deal with the bodysuit? And why the makeup? Why not just find a, a actor that suit with that role? Unless you plan on doing a younger version without the makeup. You see what I'm saying? So we might have a flashback or something later. From the conversation, he meant to do you harm. And the mistress knew it. She wants you dead so she can have her rooms back. Oh, shit. Why would she keep you and not rent you? Too ugly. She says one day I'll catch a man and he'll carry me away. I don't believe that. What are you going to do? Well, I shall ask him why he's been sent to kill me. There's something about that kid, man. She seemed like she's not there or like, 
I don't know. It's it's like she's under like a like a form of hypnosis or something. Just very blank, you know. I don't know. Oh shit. Can't really see her jumping out and swimming away. Like, was she a ghost or something? Was he having like another weird vision? <laughs> what the fuck? You have appointments today. Breakfast to be out in half an hour. Fuck. <clears throat> I want to see more of that shit, man. I really do. I want to see more of the flashbacks and yeah, <laughs> more of the voodoo shit and, and the reasons why he, like he's, it looks like he's got some fucking epic tattoos, man. <laughs> you do, you do, you have goodness in you. You can see it in your eyes. And you have the same eyes as her. Ah. She's your daughter, isn't she? And that's why you don't rent her. I said that then, or there's something about that. I would rather that you worked with me rather than against me. Work at what? Necessary evil. I said it earlier. He's gonna recruit her. I would very much like to talk business. But I would like you inside of me, Mr. Delaney. Okay. It's my first condition. I need to know where Mr. Silvertooth is hiding. I like this, man. Like, he does need it, like I said earlier. He does need to expand out, have people, his eyes and ears out on the street, you know, picking up information. And I did say that she would be in, like, his inner circle. You know what I mean? Plus, the, um, that girl, Winter, as well, as soon as she said that she was 13 and she, like, lives in the whole house, I thought, no. Nah. There's something there, man. Or maybe like her younger sister or something, you know what I mean? But daughter, okay. What are you doing? Oh shit. It was used as a slave ship, I bet you. Wow, okay. picture of his father in the background. Where the hell are you going now? Someone has been brought to London to try and kill me. I'm going to speak to them and ask them why. Clean it. <laughs> man, Tom Hardy is such a beast, man. Such a good actor. Like, the movie weren't that good, but the film, uh, Legend, playing both of the Craze twins, fucking... He's fucking a beast of an actor, man. You have been my father's lawyer for the past 40 years. And in all that time, you reported every detail of his most intimate business to his enemies at the East India Company. You are their whore. Yep. The same as almost everyone else in this city, apart from those who are actually labeled 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Mr. Delaney died a widower. He is survived by two children, both present at this division. Of his daughter, Zilpha Annabel Delaney, now Zilpha Annabel Geary. There is no mention in this last will and testament. Look at his fucking face. James Keziah Delaney is left the only existing assets of the Delaney estate, wow. including the Notka Trading Post and Landing Ground on the Pacific Northwest Coast of the Americas in what was formerly Spanish America. See, I reckon he killed him, hoping that the fucking daughter would get the fucking land and everything, then it would all go to him. Legacy is your death sentence. Out of my way! Bet ya. Fucking, it's the son-in-law. My father's debts amounted to a sum total of 215 pounds and 17 shillings. Behold, 215 pounds and 17 shillings. Mr. Thoit will pay each one of you exactly what you are due, but oh, you will form an orderly line. You will form an orderly line. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> 